Good morning, or to our online uh, audience, good morning or good evening, depending on when you are tuning in. And welcome to our midweek Lenten services at Discover Church. It's great to have you here. And again, I think we have another very special uh, presenter today. And um, I'm going to ask you to stand. And as you stand, I would just uh, uh, again mention we will have communion. And if you want to gather your elements, if you're at home, now would be a good time to do that. Uh, here in the congregation, just a reminder again that uh, wait through the words of institution, I will instruct when to open the communion elements. Our service does begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we continue with the psalm. Lord, hear my cry. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. Do not bring your servant into judgment. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. Answer me quickly, Lord. My spirit fails. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you. And let's continue our worship with songs of praise.
You may be seated. And uh, our speaker this morning uh, is Vicki Halverson, who, um, if you know Vicki, always seems to be a spark plug and a joy. Uh, I have uh, been blessed to know Vicki and Paul since my first time here, and, uh, and their joy and support of the congregation and proclamation of Christ has become something that uh, I have uh, come to appreciate it, appreciate, so I've asked Vicki. Uh, you can start coming forward, Vicki. I'm just talking until you get up here. So <laughs> I've asked uh, Vicki to uh, share her faith story and tis- uh, testimony. Thank you. I pray God's blessing on all of you. I've been a member of this church for many years, and never in those 45 years did I imagine I would be standing up here sharing my faith with you. But I'm here because I believe it's the call of every believer to share the good news. I have a life verse. It's 1 Corinthians 15:57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the story of my faith. It's simple. And I hope by sharing my faith story, you will continue to grow in yours. A few years ago, we had a class here at Discover Church to write our own story. Because our guiding teacher told us, everyone has a story. This is mine. This is the beginning of my story. I was born in faith, and I don't remember ever not having faith. And I was born with a solid foundation. There's always a question of how does faith grow? Yes, I've always had faith, but it was incomplete. It was immature. I went on a church retreat a few years ago, And the theme was the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I knew God the Father. I knew God the Son. But I didn't know God the Holy Spirit. That's what was missing. I question why everyone didn't believe, because we have the same scripture and we read the same words. I'm grateful for that retreat because now I know God the Father I know God the Son, and I also know God the Holy Spirit. That's what I learned from the book of Corinthians. The Holy Spirit illuminates the scriptures. It's important to pray before reading the scripture and studying God's words. The Holy Spirit will light up the words of scripture and give life to them. It allows us to have insight into them. And the Holy Spirit gives us that special wisdom. I get new insights to Scripture now, and that is part of my faith. But how did I get my faith? We all have a past. At the beginning of time, God had a plan to bless each of us. And just this winter in our Bible study, I realized that the blessing stated in Genesis 12, 3, and in you all families of the earth shall be blessed, is God's blessing for everyone, all the world, every single person. And that means me. I wrote in the margin of my Bible, God means for me to be saved, to be one of his, and I know I am, through faith. Again, how did I get my faith? I've discovered Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is a faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. God planned my life to be one of his followers. How? How did I get my faith? He did so by planning lives before me. My parents loved God, and they taught me that God is for all of us. Their parents taught them. 
My mother's father immigrated from Sweden when he was just a teenager. He was the oldest of eight, and he would have inherited the farm, but instead he came to America, and he brought his faith with him. My mother would tell of her dad praying a Swedish prayer over her each evening. He had learned about God from his family, and it was important to him. My grandmother lost nearly her whole family in the flu epidemic of 1918, yet she had faith. She was my mentor. That generation didn't talk a lot about themselves, their personal lives, or their faith. But one time when I was with Grandma, she said, only the Almighty could do it. The Almighty. I remembered that. Such a beautiful name for God. And that was her faith, and she passed it on to me. My other grandfather had many jobs before he decided to go to seminary and become a pastor. Prayer must have activated his faith. And my other grandma was the sweetest encourager for everyone. I can picture her sitting in a rocking chair with her hands folded, praying for me, for her family, and for anyone that God put on her heart. And before them, God was covering generations with his love. The prayers of my parents, grandparents, and those of the thousand generations who came before them were powerful. These people prayed for me, though I was unknown to them. They prayed with faith. Here's another way my faith has grown, thanks to the intervention of others. I've been in groups, and the suggestion has been, share your faith journey. I used to be really concerned about that and somewhat embarrassed because I didn't have a drama, and I didn't have a lightning bolt conversion. But then one time a gal said to me, you know, you have what we want. You have had God's presence with you every moment of your life, and you've been aware of that. And that's why this time when Pastor Carl asked me to share my faith journey, I could say, yes, Pastor Carl, I would be honored I've learned that my life was prayed for long before I was born. I can do the same. I was a young parent in another group, and one person mentioned she was praying for her unborn children, for their future, for grandchildren, on into the future. And I had not thought about that before, but from that time on, 40 years ago, I began praying for the future, for my descendants, Because God promised in the book of Deuteronomy to keep his covenant uh, in his covenant of love for a thousand generations to those who love him. I want them to know God. I want them to have a strong faith. And I want them to have a solid foundation. I had that, and I want to share it. Having faith doesn't, doesn't guarantee that we'll have a life problem-free. But it does make a life with problems solved. These turning points in my life were the results of people gathering together and daring to share with me. I met the Holy Spirit personally. I realized I was prayed for by generations before me, and I can pray it forward. I can pray for those who come after me. I can sow the seeds of God's love and have faith that he will burst them into bloom. And we can all fill our lives with prayers for others, knowing in faith that God will work. What a blessing this last year has been to walk with God today, to trust him during this pandemic to cling to the hope of healed times, times when he will heal our virus, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our relationships. This is my daily faith, 
that God will work with me, improve me, teach me, love me, walk with me every step, and show me what he desires of me. Back in January of this year, we had a lovely snowfall. I couldn't resist it. So at 10.30 at night, I bundled up, put on my snow boots, and walked in the peace of that night. The glow of the snow was such a magical experience. I went to our front yard and walked a giant heart into the newly fallen snow. The next morning, I looked out and admired that heart. To me, it was a reminder of the love of God. We had so many snows after I walked that heart into the yard. My footsteps were covered over, but I could still look out every morning and see the impression of it. Each time I looked out and saw the heart, I was reminded of the love that God has for me, for us. And I thought of the cross. In fact, today I can look up and see the cross here in our sanctuary. Jesus died on the cross for me. I was that important to him. He died for you. You are that important. He died for all, just as we learned in Genesis, a foreshadowing that he came for all. My heart in the front yard has melted away. The yard was clean and pure. My footsteps are covered over. But the heart has faded away. It has vanished. It made me think of the cross. And the work that Jesus did on the cross will not fade away. I have sin in my heart. I know Jesus died as payment for that sin. Jesus looked into my future and took the sin from my heart and held it as he died and was buried. I praise him because he rose again. He is my living God. Because of him, those footsteps of sin on my heart are washed away. And now when God looks down and sees me, he sees purity and beauty. As in Psalm 51, I am washed whiter than snow. I am clean. God sees only goodness. I don't understand it, but I believe it. This is my faith. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Vicki, very much. And uh, I'm uh, reminded of the Bible verse in Hebrews. Since then, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us, live, uh, let us put off every weight and sin which clings so closely and run with perseverance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. One of the ways we do that is through the supper, and we're going to do that uh, in preparation. We are going to be doing uh, confession of sins. Please stand. And we do come before God in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we are faithful and just, we will... Um, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Most merciful God, we confess that we're in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Holy Communion is God being physically present to us in the bread and wine and making his promise of forgiveness of sin and life with him also very much physically present to us. And on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now you can uh, be opening the first uh, seal on your communion packet and getting the wafer out. the body of Christ given for you. Open the second seal on your packet. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until he comes again. We have a final hymn to sing, Lord of all hopefulness, to the tune of Be Thou My Vision.
let us depart in peace.